Hello, I'm Black Dragon, and welcome to another edition of Black Dragon Biker TV. This is just a podcast, though, so I guess this is um, podcast only. So if you if you uh, just listen to my podcasts and you don't look at my videos, you, you get a special treat now. So I'm looking at this book called The Spirit of the One Percenter by Aaron Miklo Swoba. Aaron Miklo One Percenter Swoba from Los Perros MC. And Miklo started his own motorcycle club and has made it an international motorcycle club with people following him and uh, being a part of his motorcycle club all across the world. So uh, he's, been, he's been going through a hell of a lot of um, uh, stuff lately uh, from a lot of clubs that, that don't want to see him exist and um, a lot of clubs that have... Um, um, for one reason or another, believe that he didn't go about it the right way, all these kinds of things. And um, he's just been going through hell. But he sent me this book to my brother, Black Dragon, from Miklo One Percenter, Los Perros MC, VA. I think VA stands for Virginia chapter, maybe. And I was reading through it. It's called Spirit of the One Percenter. And it's a young man's look at being in a 1% motorcycle club. And I. I uh, I thought I would read some of it and and let you guys uh, kind of figure out uh, what you thought about it. So I'm going to start with Article 1, but we'll, we'll start here at the preface, which is, he's in his words, I'd like to start by telling the story behind the first article. So this is an interesting book. It's like 300-something pages. Oh, my God. It's, um, let's see. It was written December 23rd, 2022. And I've written a 300-page book before. Uh, this one is 345 pages. And it's fully 8.5 by 11. It is a huge book. So he wrote it, I guess, in articles. And we're going to read the first article. So, preface. I'd like to start the story behind this first article. A righteous man that went by the name Airborne One Percenter, was a man that I called my brother and was also a member of another One Percent MC. He contacted me on his birthday and asked me to write an article about the, t about the determining factors in the value of one's patch. He was someone I loved and respected very much, so for me it was an honor and privilege to write something at his request. I worked very hard on writing this article over the next several hours, but sadly, by the time I sent it to him, he had been murdered. I won't get into detail. All I can say is that he asked me to write this article for a reason. I only hope I did it justice. Fly free, airborne one percenter. Article 1, The Value of the Patch. Written 103 2021. Good morning, MC World. Miklo One Percenter here, wishing everyone a happy Sunday from Monterey. I got a special request last night from someone that I love and respect very much in the One Percent MC World. He asked me to write about a subject very near and dear to my heart the value of one's club's patch versus another. My philosophy on this subject is really quite simple. The man makes the patch. If you stand three men from three different clubs side by side in comparison, all three have patches. All three have a diamond-shaped 1% patch on their chest. They all ride a Harley. The average citizen may not be able to tell the difference between the three. But please believe that everyone that knows anything about the MC world can see exactly who each one of them are behind their patches. The man on the left has a brand new set of colors that he ordered off the internet. He, his vest is still creased at the hips and shoulders as it is brand new. His patch is a cheesy internet depiction of a skull or a skeleton or one of the options that were available on the website he used to design, to design his colors. The front on his rockers is the exact same internet, excuse me, the font on his rockers 
is the exact same internet font used in hundreds of other cheesy internet-made patches by other groups trying to live out a TV fantasy. There is not a single hand-drawn design on his colors. It's all computer art. He obtained all his stereotypical information on the 1% culture from the various clickbait websites created by people trying to cash in on biker culture. He will end up meeting a real 1%er at some point and get so scared that he'll give up on his biker phase and move on, telling all his white-collar buddies, telling all of his white-collar buddies about how he was a badass biker back in the day. His patch ain't worth a F-U-C-K. He knows it, and everyone else knows it, too. So, on to the guy in the middle. He's a very special kind of poser. He sports the patch of a well-known old-school 1% club that has built a reputation over the years for committing senseless violence at a consistent rate. A club of overcompensating bullies that roll around gas station to gas station looking for victims. But they only attack when the numbers are in their favor. He paid good money to skip out on the prospecting phase and obtain his 1% patch. This will be a short chapter in his life. Every move in his life has been geared toward his tough guy image. He doesn't care about brotherhood. He doesn't care about history. He doesn't care about the value of his patch. He just knows that it's a popular patch that opens doors and scares people. He has a brand new souped up Harley. He keeps his patches really clean on his designer brand vest. He works very hard not to let his bike get his Jordans dirty. And if you say anything about how fake he is, You'll get those other dudes that paid money to wear that same patch he wears, and they'll attack you with a pack mentality. That's the closest to brotherhood any of them will ever come. Then, one day, they'll get in trouble with law and denounce their club affiliation as they point at each other in the courtroom to get lowered sentences. His patch ain't worth a F-U-C-K. It probably used to be worth something long before he ever wore it, but it has since become tainted and contaminated. He's a cancer to true 1% culture. Now, on to the real 1%er. The man on the right. The man on the right has a patch that was drawn by hand by his club's founders. As you look at him from head to toe, his appearance tells the story. His hair is long. He wears a worn-out, faded bandana to keep his hair out of his eyes. He's dressed for the long ride. Behind the tough skin of his face, you see the heart of a good man in his eyes. A man of honor. His patches are dirty and faded from all of his time on the road, wearing them in all types of weather. His old comfy jeans sport a chain from his belt loop to his back pocket. His boots look like they've been through a war. He's a true one percenter. He worked very hard to be able to wear his patch with pride. For these part... <coughs> Excuse me. Whether he's part of an older club or someone that founded a club himself, He's a true 1% brother through and through. As you listen to him speak, you can hear the genuine love he has for his brothers, his club, its history, and his journey to become the true 1% brother he is. There's something that you can never buy with money. What he has is worth more than all the money in the world. He, his brothers, and the brothers that came before them all stood in defense of their patch and will forever stand in defense of its honor and worth. 
Nobody can buy this patch. He knows it, and everyone else knows it too. Of the three men, his patch is worth the most. He needn't worry whether people see that his patch is worth more than the other two. Anyone that matters in the MC world knows that of the three, he is the true one percenter. The moral of the story? If you respect this culture and want to be part of it, then do it for the right reasons and do it the right way. My right way may be different than the right way you've heard elsewhere. But as I've said before, what I say in these articles is coming straight from the heart of a true one percenter. Thank you for reading. Much love and respect always. Miklo one percenter. Los perros forever, forever, los perros. Well, that was Article 1. And uh, I guess we'll be looking at this book a little bit, a uh, little bit more detail. But that was Article One, and I'm excited to get into it and read some more articles. <laughs> if <coughs> if I can stop coughing, jeez Louise, get a little drink there. But um, just a little treat for you guys. Uh, Eleven minutes, twelve minutes long, I guess, and. Um, you guys that are here on the radio program or the uh, on the uh, audio program are are uh, are online. What do we call this thing? Podcast. Uh, got, get a special treat as this is not going to be on the video um, or shot as a video at all. So I'll probably be reading through this book and sharing these articles with you. Um, and you can get it on Amazon, and I think you might be able to get it from his website. It's called The Spirit of the One Percenter by Aaron Miklo Swoboda, Miklo One Percenter. And on the back of it, uh, it says, it's got a picture of him, The Spirit of the One Percenter, this timeless and beautiful culture of freedom and brotherhood known as American One Percent Motorcycle Club Culture, a culture that so many have sacrificed for, is at risk in the 21st century. This book was created with the hope of giving all of the true one percenters of the world a light to guide them as they keep our beloved culture alive in rebellion of the forces from outside and from within that seek its destruction. The hope is also that non-one percenters can gain a better understanding of the philosophy of the true one percenter by reading this book. You have tried relentlessly to poison my message of freedom and true brotherhood, but I will always live on in the hearts of the righteous. You can attempt to corrupt with power, contaminate with greed, infiltrate with snakes, ban our freedoms. It doesn't matter. The spirit of the true one percenter will live forever. Signed. Miklo one percenter. Well, listen, man, uh, that was fun. And it's important to know that we are not fake news. We are not fake news. Okay, so that uh, that was supposed to be a commercial, but it went out to the wrong device. Let's try it again. We are not fake news. Oh, geez. That really went to the wrong device. One more time. You are fake news. There we go. <laughs> Black Dragon Biker News Network. Biker News, you can trust. 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 Oh, that was fun. Um, listen, you can uh, get us Monday through Friday, and we're going to be doing a lot of these, so just look for them to come up. Uh, I'll be reading a whole lot of books on here and even some of my own and, uh, you know, having some more conversations and dedicating some more time to the podcast itself. So, um, man, like and share and subscribe this thing and we will have some more fun. 
I'm Black Dragon. That's my two cents. Uh, make sure to catch us, Black Dragon Biker News, Monday through Friday on Facebook and YouTube, and here at the Dragon's Lair Motorcycle Chaos. Also, make sure to um, catch us. We have a um, um, we have um, uh, our MC Protocol shows that come on on Facebook and YouTube. Also, get us on TikTok. And we also have MC Protocol 101, one of our new channels. And also look for our Think Tactical. Think Tactical is on YouTube. Think Tactical is our prepper show. It's also Think Tactical here uh, in our uh, podcast sphere. And ThinkTacticalNews.com is our online newspaper, as well as Biker Liberty is our uh, bikerliberty.com is our online news magazine. All of my books, Prospects Bible, Prospects Bible for Women's Motorcycle Clubs, Sergeant at Arms Bible, The President's Bible, Chronicle One, Principles of Motorcycle Club Leadership, and the Public Relations Officer's Bible are all available on Amazon and Kindle. And you can get your autographed copies from blackdragonsgear.com. The Prospects Bible is available also on Audible, where you can get your uh, audio version of the book as well as the Kindle or the printed version. All right, that's all that stuff. I'm Black Dragon. Thanks for tuning in and get skinny. <laughs>